Hello, my name is Martin Fogarty, National Hurling Development Manager, and I'm joined here with Emma Byrne, who is the Games Promotion Officer in St. Vincent's Club in Dublin. Emma has brought together tonight for us um, a group of young boys and girls of varying abilities and experience levels. So we've put together a collection of skills that you might find useful in your training. Broadly speaking, the skills are based on what I like to call the Magnificent Seven, or the seven essentials of hurling, which are in no particular order, raising and catching, hooking and blocking, striking and hand passing, and of course, first touch. We all know that the game is most important in training. However, if you don't have the skills, well then it's very difficult to play the game. So to get the balance, to get a mix between them is what we would suggest. And if you, um, if you work on some of these skills, you know, throughout the season, we think you won't be going too bad. So Emma, so we follow the station-based model. So uh, use the different activities, put them into, say, for instance, six groups. Uh, rotate the groups around. So you go five minutes uh, at each station, and that brings up to your half an hour, and then you can finish off with mini matches for half an hour. Uh, it's really good for keeping the children engaged and also to introduce new coaches uh, that might be new to the sport and giving them confidence in a small setting, and then walk them up, uh, working on specific skills. So thank you very much and we hope you find the activities beneficial. Thank you. The game is the most important part of any training session and that is why we are starting this video with games. Small sided games from 1v1 right up to 9v9 give players more time on the ball. The coach can set different conditions such as ground only, hand passing only or whatever he or she deems beneficial to the player's development. Personally, I think that young players should play most of their games on the ground and build in the other skills by degrees. You will notice in some of these clips that players who are not proficient at rising and striking very quickly get bottled up and that can be frustrating. If the players are bunching too much, everyone following the ball. I recommend that the pitch is divided into at least two areas and confining the players to their own area. We now move into over 30 short skills or drills that are suitable for children that have left nursery and are being introduced to go games and formal games. Striking is possibly the most important skill in hurling and camogie. Before you have a good strike, you must have a good swing. And in order to develop a good swing, you need to have a good grip. This little routine helps develop a good grip and a strong, flexible wrist. It also works on movement and footwork, which are hugely important in all sports. The coach ensures that the players are holding the hurl in their strong or dominant hand. Swinging on an imaginary ball for a few moments in every training session will develop a player's striking ability. Coaches should watch out for proper technique and good footwork. The players are working on both sides. The coach watches to make sure that the players are locking their hands and getting good wrist, elbow and shoulder action. Striking the slitter hard does not mean it will go further. A smooth, relaxed stroke will yield much better results. Here the players are simulating catching a high ball and striking to the net or over the bar. Striking tyres is an excellent way to develop a good swing, as the bounce of the hurl off the tyre helps to get good motion into the arms and shoulders. A good swing will have the elbows raised with the hurl and hands going above the shoulder, the hurl almost parallel to the ground. Again, it is very important to practice striking from both sides. When striking, the player should not hold the hurl too tightly, firmly but not tightly. A good tip is to not choke the hurl. The first little girl in this line with the pink helmet has excellent technique when striking on her right side. She has a little bit of work to do on her left as she is not getting a full swing.
This exercise introduces the players to running side by side in preparation for a shoulder to shoulder clash. In all these exercises, it is very important that players work on their right and left sides. Here we are progressing the clash. A player's confidence must be built up. For inexperienced players, it is always good to do the exercise in slow motion first. Talk and contact also. A good tip for all skills is get it right first, then get it fast, and finally get it fast under pressure. Here again, we are progressing the shoulder to shoulder clash ball. The dribble is a very important skill and is often required in a game. First, we start off dribbling the ball in straight lines. We progress then to dribbling around poles or cones. A further progression could be dribbling out halfway, then striking the slitter to the player opposite who continues the routine. Here is a very popular little game where, while dribbling around a confined area, the players protect their own ball while attempting to flick out every other player's ball. The ability to strike a ball well on the ground from either right or left sides is the foundation of playing the game of hurling and camogie. Here the players are working on their strike and are also learning to stop the ball. Vary the distance according to ability. This exercise is suitable for players from nursery right through to inter-county seniors. Here we have the fundamental but essential skill of striking from the hand and catching. Again, increase the distance according to ability. The players here are working on their touch Note the player who moves every time before striking. This is an excellent habit to develop and will result in him being very difficult to dispossess in a game. I would rate this exercise as being one of the most important for players of all ages, particularly for young players. The player in the middle attempts to move the ball and strike it without letting it stop. The players at the end control the ball and move it away quickly. Hand passing is an extremely useful skill that is often neglected by coaches. Like all skills, you build from the bottom. Get proficient standing close to a partner or a wall, increase the distance by degrees, and then bring varying degrees of movement and distance into the exercise. As with most skills, they usually go in twos. While practicing the hand pass, the players are also practicing their catch. Sometimes, depending on ability, a bean bag can be used for catching or soloing. With all drills and indeed games, I would recommend putting players of similar ability together. If a player is too strong or not strong enough for his or her group, then learning can be very limited for that player and frustration can set in. This exercise involves a solo with no hand pass. The players hand the ball to each other. Combining two skills can be difficult for some players, so sometimes it is best to separate the skills until players become proficient. It is good practice to get the players used to taking four steps with the ball in their hand. Also, when hand passing, get them to give the pass from a distance, not running up so close that they could hand the ball to their colleague. Here the players are working on the row lift and jab lift, practicing one-handed and two-handed lifts. Whether the player turns the palm of his hand up, known as the cup catch, 
or down known as the claw catch is a personal choice. I favour the cup catch, especially when rising, as there is less chance of dropping the ball. Most coaches will insist on the toe of the hurl pointing out or away from the body, as opposed to pointing in. I am not fixated on either method, so long as the player is proficient. In fact, I would make a strong case for pointing the toe in, despite being in a very small minority with that opinion. It is important to put the toe of the hurl, not the heel, under the ball. Many players fail to rise the ball because of this. This little exercise is a must, as not only does it help a player retrieve a lost ball, it trains him or her to keep playing even after making a mistake. The simplest catches are the most important ones, such as not dropping a ball when you raise it, or not dropping a ball that is passed to you from a close distance. Start against the wall or with a partner, increasing the distance and height as you progress. Here the boys are throwing the ball low and to the side of their partner. This routine attempts to break the habit of a player taking the ball on the hurl instead of in the hand. For beginners, bean bags are an excellent introduction to catching as they are easier to catch. Here the players have moved on to catching high balls and moving around, simulating the skills they will need in a game. When they can strike long, high and accurately to each other, then that would be the best catching exercise of all. The coach should ensure that the players catch the ball with their non-grip hand. The grip hand or dominant hand holds the hurl. The other hand catches the ball. The players here are also protecting their catching hand with their hurl. In these first couple of routines, the players are just getting familiar with stopping a ball. This can be done on their own against a wall, with a partner or assisted by a coach. The players should practice stopping high balls, low balls and balls to the side. We are now moving to blocking the ball as an opponent strikes it from the hand. This is a very difficult skill to master, so it is important that coaches are patient, breaking down the skill into various stages. Ensure that the player executing the block holds the hurl firmly at the handle, reaches in, keeping an eye on the ball and on his or her opponent's hurl. We are now looking at blocking a ball as an opponent strikes it on the ground. Again, holding the hurl firmly and protecting your feet. Here the players are simulating striking and blocking. This is best done initially in slow motion with minimal force. Players can start off in a standing position striking on one side only. They can then progress to both sides and finally the blocking player moving towards the striking player. This exercise is to encourage a player to attempt a block even when they cannot reach their opponent. More experienced players can practice this exercise with a ball, with the striker facing a net or a wall. A very good exercise. Like blocking, hooking is an advanced skill and requires confidence and plenty of practice. Starting from a standing position and advancing to walking and then jogging, it is best practiced in slow motion at first until players develop good technique. The balls on the rope create a nice controlled stepping stone between slow motion hooking and a match situation. The player hooking holds his hurl in one hand at full length with the toe pointing up to the sky so that his opponent's hurl will slide up when hooked.
Hall trainers are very useful hurling aids, as demonstrated in some of our clips. They can also be used for some fun activities which the children will enjoy very much. Movement is a key element of all sports. The players are getting plenty of movement here. The pole trainer also offers an excellent opportunity for getting new coaches involved and starting them out on their coaching journeys.